Hi, I'm Terry Klein, and this is 10 Minutes on Songs. This week, we're going to be talking about what I call the magic chord. Um, before we, we jump into that stuff, though, it would be really cool if you could click the, uh, the subscribe button. Um, as far as I can tell, that will not affect your life in any way. I subscribe to a bunch of channels, and I don't think I've gotten a single notification in any context whatsoever. But to the powers that be, the more subscribers that you have, the better it looks. Um, so, uh, so please do subscribe if, if you, uh, if you want to uh, support this, this songwriting YouTube series that I'm, I'm trying to get off the ground. We're talking this week about the magic chord. Um, uh, and I found my way to it in a very haphazard fashion. I was trying to learn how to finger pick. Um, it was shortly after I had started writing songs. I'd played guitar for a long time before I started writing. Um, but I'd never learned to finger pick in kind of a systematic fashion. Um, no patterns, really. Um, so I decided to try to learn some basic finger picking patterns. Um, and uh, the... The, the, so what I did is I went on YouTube um, and, and watched a couple. And the best one that I found, and I don't think it's up anymore because I've tried to send it to other people who have asked me how I learned to finger pick. I think it's gone. But the best one I found was a guy teaching people how to finger pick based on the Bob Dylan song, Don't Think Twice, It's All Right. That song is on uh, the freewheel in Bob Dylan. I think it's one of his very best songs. I think it's one of the best songs ever written. Um but I was just learning how to finger pick and I loved the song and it was so cool that I could do it based on this, uh, that I, that I could do it, learn, learning also this song that I love so much. So what I did is I sat down, um, and, and watched the video and he walked through it super slowly. He wasn't even teaching the pattern yet. He just walked through the chords. <laughs> capos on the second fret but I would refer to this and I do as a shorthand uh, for shorthand purposes I do refer to this as a d7 over f sharp um, the uh, it's actually with the capo on the second fret and e7 over g sharp um, and um, the the theory geeks would probably prefer that I call it a dominant seven with the third in the bass uh, but that's what it is um, a few months later, um, I decided I wanted to learn the Robert Earl Keane song, No Kind of Dancer. It's, um, I think it's his best song, which is saying something, because he has a lot of really, really extraordinary songs. Uh, um, but it's my favorite, and I think it's just an incredible, incredible work of art. At that point, my ear wasn't uh, what it is now, so I had to jump on online and, and look at, at online tablature um, websites and, and see if I, could, if I could pick my way through it uh, that way. Um, the first thing that I saw had it going like this. The first of the month brings back the notion of a big round wide dance hall on a cool summer night. I knew that was wrong. That was wrong. I knew it was wrong. Um, so what I did is I jumped on YouTube and I started looking at videos of Robert Earl Keane himself playing the song. Uh, and what I noticed is that he did this. The first of the month brings back the notion. There it is. There it is. D7 over F sharp. Of a big round wide dance hall on a cool summer night. So... I'm still not sure if it registered with me yet, like how special that chord was and how it could accomplish, how it could kind of carry so much emotional weight way out of proportion to just kind of what it is. It didn't really occur to me that this happened in, let's say, three of my eight most favorite songs until I... Uh, was trying to learn Girl from the North Country. And I think it was the same guy who did that Don't Think Twice um, tutorial doing it on Girl from the North Country because it's a slightly different finger-picking pattern. 
So he goes through that, and again, he goes super slowly, talking about the, you know, just so you can get kind of a handle on the chords, and he goes... wanted to try to start to include it in songs of my own um my songs at that point were still really rudimentary um and uh and so it didn't happen um until um i was working on a, a song of mine um that i'd written and rewritten a bunch um it's called madeline and it's on my first record um and uh the choruses you know are in uh, the key of f and it's you know super basic you know, uh, like that. And then at the end of each chord go, chorus, it goes, my, oh, my. My, oh, my. So verse, chorus, verse, chorus, and then it goes to this bridge. Made a line. My name is so sweet. I wish their life had been sweeter to me. And so that's, I'm pretty sure that's the first time I really used that chord um, uh, in an effective way in the context of a song where, it's, where it fits. Most recent example is on my new record, text this song when the Ocotillo bloom. Well, I love you, my darling, with all of my heart, your mountains, your masculine moon. And I miss you, my darling, more than you know what I'll be back. Yes, I'll be back when the Ocotillo bloom. Here it comes. Yes, I'll be back oh, when the Yoko Chiho I, you know, I've been thinking about this chord as I've been as I've been getting ready to do this thing this week, and I think that um, what it accomplishes somehow is this ambiguous melancholy. Um, it's not pure melancholy because it's based on that dominant seventh chord, which has an element of whimsy. But it also feels kind of like a minor chord. But it's not. It's dominant seventh chord with the third and the bass. I'm sure that there are, are theory people out there who could explain this, why it works so well in the manner that it works. Um, and there might even be some neurologists who can explain what specific neural pathways it hits and what neurons it causes to fire that make you feel that sort of, oh, that feeling <laughs> that you get when you're listening to Don't Think Twice and No Kind of Dancer and Girl from the North Country. This, this feeling of, 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 of loss, but also kind of of, you lost something that was kind of fun when it was happening. The most recent version of a song that's come out that has it, that I worked on, um, is a song I co-wrote with Jordi Bison and Todd Withers. It's called Between in the Sun and the Moon. It's the first track on Jordy's new record, Free and Fine, which came out at the end of June of 2019. It's a wonderful record. I encourage you to check it out. Um, and so we put that chord in the, in the bridge of that song, um, which goes like this. Across the floor, step by step, dust to dawn and breath to breath, wishing we could stay right here. So that, like, that is where that, I mean, the emotional context in which that chord works is really kind of what I was just talking about. It's, um, it's um, two, lover, two people who are dancing, um, but it's a love connection that never gets made. Um, so again, there's a, a whimsy to it, the dance, but um, an element of sadness also. I think it is the magic chord. Um, if there are examples of it that you know of that I haven't covered here, throw them in the comments. I'd love to check them out. If there are songs that you've written, um, I'd love to check that out too. Um, 
But uh, this has been 10 Minutes on Songs, and I hope you all have a good week, and I'll catch up with you soon.